All right, guys, so where I left off last time, uh, pushing the car out, today's Friday, pushed back in. I got it to start, so I had to make it permanently start, so I had to run one wire to the ignition live for the ECU, and works, no problem. I'm having a big problem with the gauges. I would turn the key, and it would just basically, everything in the, in the dash would turn off. I'm gonna show you guys how to, how to find it and fix it. I found it. Um, I was under the presumption that it was a bad ground and I was right. Here's a good way to test for that. Right in here, this is the Mark IV harness, but it goes directly into the Mark III harness, which is uh, like your G1, G2 connectors in the back of the CE2 fuse box. Right here, G105 ground on cylinder head. Ground for cylinder head, brown and white, G105. So remember that, G105. This brown and white wire in the Mark IV harness is the exact same, but it's now it's now pin nine. I double checked, triple checked. It is just a single direct wire directly to the fuse box. But I'll show you uh, what happens. So you go in here, you get ready to turn the gauge on. The cluster, here I'll turn the lights on to exaggerate it. As you can see, looks normal and you turn the key on gauges do nothing and the odometer goes away and the clock goes away the only thing you get are the uh, wires that get their external power source ground source whatever you want to call it but i'm just going to turn this off for now just so i don't kill the battery so you come out here you can hear the ecu is going you can hear the throttle body making its nice zip zap noise but you take the test light obviously it's connected to ground um, now this is a, again, this is a direct ground and I have it ran underneath the battery box. You guys saw that? No, uh, it's, it's under there, but it's just not a good connection. How is it not a good connection? Because I know it's a direct connection to it. So I should have basically no power coming to this test light. But if you see, I put this on here and you see that weirdo pulsing power. That basically means the power is not coming through it, it's stopping here. So it's stopping on the ground wire right now. So that's a telltale sign of a bad ground. Now, how do you test it? Obviously, always be careful of this type of stuff. Have a test wire. Jumper. Here it is. Watch this. It's now connected. And guess what? No more power at the end of it. Why? Because it's completing the circuit. It's coming all the way around, back into the battery, and going back out. It's happy as a clam. So you come over here, and now look with that ground connected. Look what I have. I have my gas gauge. I have the lights back on. I have the coolant gauge buzzing, telling me there's nothing going on. I have the oil buzzing telling me that there's no oil. That's the easiest way to find the ground. Obviously, I, I like I said, I triple checked every single wire and there was no issue. So that just unfortunately means I gotta pull the battery box back out, which it's not a big deal. I have to do it anyway, um, because in the Mark IV harness, um, this is me just letting it slip my mind, does not have a Speedo cable, see? If you are used to Mark III's, which very used to them, all that runs through the engine harness. And in the Mark IV, it just slipped my mind. I assumed it's in the harness. Well, guess what? It's not. So that means that I have uh, probably cut that out thinking it was something else and thrown it in the trash. But I keep many things. so. This is a uh, plug off of any Mark III, B3, B4, Corrado, many, many, many cars. So this is just a rectangle pin. Whereas like uh, on a Mark IV, mostly all the connectors are now D-shape. Uh, what I mean by D-shape is, here you go, it's a great example. Here's the map sensor, you see it's uh, flat on one side, curved on the other side. D-shaped, easy enough, right? square rectangle whatever you want to call this because there's a bunch of them on a mark three with these horrible uh never disconnect metal clips that you just gotta yank off so i'll add this into the into there make a little sub harness for it because 
Now, you know, since I'm already way too far into this thing that I'm not reopening the harness. I'll make it real nice, test the tape it, run it over, connect it where it needs to connect, and then whenever you pull the trans, this will follow the engine harness, but it will not be part of the engine harness, if that makes any sense. Start cleaning up this wiring. I also have to figure out how to run the uh, check engine light for the Mark IV. I know the pin, the pin for the Mark III is right here. You just touch that the ground, this yellow and black wire. G110, so that's the, the check engine light. I would like to have it to retain its functions. I gotta find where to put it in the Mark IV harness. Everything that I look up in the Bentley looks like it just um, gets it through like can in the uh, in the cluster. So I, I gotta I gotta figure that out. Again, trying to figure out uh, the check engine light wiring. I've I've went through the the book a lot, and uh, basically because it's a can system, you can see this is. K83 is the uh, Mark IV check engine, and it just goes nowhere. Um, so I started Googling and Googling and Googling. The only answer I found uh, back in, my goodness, 2015, this guy, 2K3 GTI 18T, he said he was having the same issue. It looks like on the, there's those six pin connectors on the Mark IV harness side uh, that are all up in the, uh, plenum on a mark IV. the purple and yellow wire says that it's going to be an emissions fault lamp he says you hook up the yellow and black wire which is out of uh the mark III harness to the purple and yellow wire so i'll show you how i have it set up here is the black and yellow i just have it jumpered up to the this is where that six pin connector would be on the Mark IV harness, right to this uh, purple and, or yeah, purple and yellow, purple and gold. And you can see, when I turn the ignition on, there's the check engine light. If when I started, if the check engine light goes out, if so, then, you know, we're, we're good to go. Clear everything. Should be able to start it now and see if this check engine goes out. And it does. Sweet. So that's a really, really big result right there. That's, that's, that's a result. I'm really happy I did not expect that to work. But now we know that whenever you do this type of swap, keep things as OEM as possible, which I'm trying to do, you can you can do it. G110. See, it tells you all this goofy information about G60. Uh, I can tell you right now, no one cares about a G60. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, over here, black and yellow. So that's G110. So you just connect that G110 wire, which I have coming out here, jumped all the way back up here to where this, uh, I believe it was an orange connector again, yellow and purple wire, or purple and yellow wire. Connect it to that and you get working check engine light. So now when I go to emissions, it'll scan right through. If I have some misfires, I'll feel them, but uh, you know, you'll, you'll be able to see it as you should. If uh, I, I, I couldn't be happier. It's pretty sweet to have everything as OEM as possible. So after this, I will be definitely cleaning up the wiring and then getting to that uh, vehicle speed sensor. Actually, you know what I forgot to do is to ensure that the tack works. Hmm. Look at that, the tack works too. Dude, I'm, I'm pretty stoked for this now. I just, I, <laughs> this has been uh, lots of days of, of wiring and, um, and you know, wiring can, can kick your ass, but I got it, man, I just, I'm just super stoked. Yeah, as as messy and terrible as it looks right now, um, it runs and it, it, it runs well. This is gonna be awesome. I can't wait, wait to have all the boost piping on and make <laughs> make 20 pounds of boost and be two stepping and no lift shifting. Since I'm wrapping up with this, I'm gonna try to give you a few little pointers, what tools to use, that kind of stuff for 
wiring. Old tool, but works well. This is like an automatic wire stripper. You just put the wire in here, clamps down, strips the end off. Nice and easy. You can do it to the end of wires or in the middle of wires if you gotta like add and, and like solder in a wire. It's, it's really good for that. Non-insulated buck connectors and insulated buck connectors. So it can really get a good good bite inside the connector. Uh, you never want to put solder joints inside an engine bay or really anywhere. I, I don't like solder. It can get hot, crack, break, all that kind of stuff. But with a mechanical bond, which is a buck connector, if you do it right, eh, you're never going to have an issue out of it. You got to use good material and parts on everything. This is some Scotch Super 33. You'll never have a problem with this stuff. And then for nice OEM style finishes with this wire right here, you see how it's got a nice cloth tape. That's what this stuff is. This is called Tessa tape. Uh, I got this off Amazon. I think I got like three big rolls of it like this in a pack for like 15, 16 bucks. Well worth it. Uh, the other thing I like to say is, you know, used parts know how to work. So if you're taking apart a, an old harness, any anything old, try to reuse as many things as you can. Too much in the landfills basically. So corrugated tubing, as much of the original Tessa tape, rub through connector, all that kind of stuff. Just reuse it, there's no reason not to. I like to heat shrink everything. If it has one piece, add two, why not? Quarter inch, 230 seconds, or it might be three. Sixteenth, I got bigger sizes on the back. Cut them in nice, you know, like six inch strands. That way you can cut them down to wherever you need. Uh, you can see I'm starting to run low. I've gone through a bit on this project. Uh, oh yeah, I always kind of keep lighters in there because you never know if you're gonna have a heat gun or not. And then over here, this is my big connector box. This is with all the buck connectors, ring terminals, that kind of stuff. You can see, you know, try to put the exact gauge, if they're male, if they're female, you know, uh, maybe sometimes even the, the part numbers. It took a while to kind of accumulate this stuff. It's not expensive, but it's not inexpensive. You know what I mean? It's like, just buy the stuff, have it on hand, especially if you're gonna be doing stuff like this. And then again, use parts. I have lots of wiring harness uh, kind of all over the place. So here's a little stripping tool. See it's right in there. And there you go. I got a nice clean edge. Twist so it doesn't band up as you're trying to put it in. Do a little squeeze. Wiper linkage in, get all the wiring routed. Uh, the ECU is just gonna hang out for now. Reuse the two coil pack bolt holes. So this upper one is able to put a zip tie in that uh, snaps in place. And then underneath, that's where I ran the math wiring. I just depinned everything, put it some nice uh, anti like wear tape around it and ran it down here so it's nice and clean out of the way. Recirc valve over here on a mark three it's vacuum operated so this has to get a vacuum source got the coolant bottle in i'll get it plugged in in a second but the issue i was having was this used to be on the intake and you can see no room for the coolant bottle with that 
here's how it was. Cut that off, just get a, a real sharp razor blade and put a hose clamp around this side of it and then just follow it around with a razor blade. And easy enough. I think it'll be just fine. I first fully bolted in, all the wirings ran, cows on. I have the O2 wires coming out of the side over here just like factory. And then uh, so I have the AC wire here. I'll extend that later. It's not really a big deal. Um, we got the brake booster hose all connected. Uh, again, being on the budget, I'm just using all the stuff from the 1.8T and the 2 liter that I can find. Go all the way around. And then here's a little vacuum port off the side. Comes up here. Has a little check valve in it somewhere. somewhere. I, forgot, I forgot to put the check valve in it. Where is it? Right here. There it is. That's the check valve he needs. Yep, gotta put that in there. Mm-hmm.